it's time for Dodger What's going on, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Welcome to the Dodgers Nation post game show. Thanks for rocking with us after the Dodgers beat the Giants by a final score of 3 to 1. They win the first of 19 meetings this season. The Dodgers are undefeated against the Giants this year. It was a tight one, it was a nail biter, it was intense, but the Dodgers, they got it done. Rodon, one of the hottest pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. Chris Taylor gets the clutch two strike, two out single to give the Dodgers two runs there in the second. They add an insurance run later in the eighth when the Dodgers, they find a way to get it done. little shaky at times. Craig Kimbrell had some command issues at three consecutive full counts. You saw Bruce Dark Gratterall wasn't as sharp. Daniel Hudson, he left some pitches out over the plate that they didn't capitalize on. And then Julio Urias, he was efficient. He was in control tonight. He was cruising all night long. And I know what you guys want to talk about, the fact that he was taken out of the game while he was twirling a gem tonight. Julio Urias, he ends up going six innings, four hits, no earned runs, four strikeouts, no walks, and only 65 innings, uh, 65 pitches thrown, and 52 of those 65 pitches were strikes. This was as efficient as you're ever going to see Julio Urias, because when he's on, he's efficient, he's in command, he's attacking that strike zone, he had the feel for his off-speed stuff, he was inducing soft contact all night, 19 for 21 on first pitch strike, so Julio Urias looked like the Uri ace once again tonight, and he's so clutch, he's so big in games like like this, but give me your thoughts, give me your reactions to the Dodgers. 3-1 win over San Francisco, and look, the Dodgers, they're undefeated against the Giants. They gave San Francisco the giant L in Game 5 of the NLDS. They beat the Giants in their house last year, and I love playing that trump card. It's a great memory. But here goes, jump right in the comments section. We got Sam Grandall over on YouTube W. We got Jason. That was a nail biter. We got Jesus. Let's go. We got Luis Craig greater than sign Kenley. I mean, I think when it came to Craig Kimbrell, he's gone from not pitching very often to getting more work, and then tonight you came out, and he definitely just was struggling with his command. He wasn't finishing on his fastballs. You also saw he wasn't throwing that fastball for strike, I mean that breaking ball for strike, and when he's not throwing his curveball for strikes, he tends to get into some trouble because then he knows the hitters are sitting on that fastball, so that really is the key when it comes to Craig Kimbrell being effective out there, is being able to throw his curveball for strikes, and tonight he just wasn't able to do that early in counts. But look, I think that you look at his stuff, it's still electric. I like the way he battled in that inning, and he still he got the job done at the end of the day. But what do you guys think about that? Do you guys agree with my man Luis S. over there on YouTube, Craig greater than sign Kenley? Because Kenley, he's actually been really solid this season. He gave up those three runs in his first appearance of the year. But other than that, he's been really good for the Atlanta Braves. But tonight, Craig Kimbrell, you saw him go out there and uh, yeah, went man, man, mainly with that four seam fastball. Averaged ninety five point one miles per hour. Went with that curveball. wasn't uh, when he wasn't getting as much uh, swing and miss on. And then yeah, he was loading up the count. You were seeing him some foul balls and uh, yeah, ton, a lot of pitches there. But here we go. We got Yo D Mac. Happy Tuesday, my dude. What up, Anthony Keen? Hey, I don't want to do this to you, but you had the Rams in the house and tonight. The Dodgers, they beat the San Francisco Giants like the Rams beat the San Francisco 49ers last year. And, uh, yeah, I know that had to hurt. But uh, nice to see uh, the Rams in the house. But no, I'm just messing with my man. But here we go. We got uh, Phillip. Dodgers win, baby. How uh, Roberts almost blew this one. Michael Snow. Michael Snow, if you look at the way they, so they take Julio Urias, and that was very interesting because Julio Urias, he had thrown 85 pitches in a game this season. You know what Walker Buehler was able to do last week against the Arizona Diamondbacks, throwing a complete game, throwing over 100 pitches. But when you look at Julio, we look at this Dodgers team, they have a lot of games coming up. They play 31 games in 31 days, and you want to stretch out this bullpen. You want to build up this bullpen as much as you possibly can. And then with Julio Urias, he's very efficient tonight, and he's throwing strikes all night long. And it's a tight game. He goes out of the game. It's a 2 nothing game. I definitely 
want to hear what Doc has to say as far as his decision to take Julio out in this one because Julio was making it look easy. Julio Urias was cruising tonight. His slurve, his curve, his breaking stuff was as good as it as it looked all season. His fastball command was on point. I definitely think it's a good question. It's a, a question that needs to be answered by Dave Roberts because, yes, this – this uh, this uh, this offense not really getting very much tonight. If you look at this Dodgers offense, not much doing. And I think a lot of that has to do with these dead balls, man frauds, dead balls. We saw on numerous occasions. How about Bellinger in the seventh? 102.3 miles per hour off the bat, 390 feet, 790 expected batting average. It dies at the warning track. You saw Will Smith the fly out in the sixth to right. You saw Max Muncie fly out. And these are these are these are uh, this is contact that we've seen go past the fence in years past. So like I said, you got the All-Star game in Los Angeles this year. I can't wait to see the warning track derby this year with these dead balls. What are your thoughts on the dead balls? What are your thoughts on on the, the slower offense. But, yeah, they did just enough to get it done. You got to give Chris Taylor credit. Clutch Taylor a big two-strike, two-out single there in the second inning off Carlos Rodon. And the good thing about what the Dodgers offense did tonight against Carlos Rodon is they made him work. He threw 95 pitches through six innings. and in his command, it was a little off. 60 of those 95 pitches go for strikes. If you look at Rodon, 14 of his 23 first pitches were strikes. So if his command was a little off when you compare it to Julio Urias and how he's looked earlier in the year. And just three strikeouts. Just three strikeouts for Rodon. He led the league in strikeout percentage. So if you look at this, Dodgers played discipline. They weren't expanding the strike zone. Yes, they did chase a couple times with that slider outside of the zone. But for the most part, they were staying disciplined and they were working counts. And they were able to put up two runs against the hottest pitcher, one of the hottest pitchers if not the hottest pitcher in all of Major League Baseball to start the season. So you got to give this Dodgers offense, offense credit, and you also have to give this Dodgers pitching staff credit for getting the job done as well. Bruce Dark Gratterall, not as sharp. He goes a third of an inning. He had the walk. He gave the hit, had the one earned run. Alex Vesia, he comes in after Gratterall there in the seventh inning, gives up the sack fly. Uh, we'll talk about Justin Turner's defense a little bit. We'll talk about Daniel Hudson, Craig Kimbrell. But kind of the key to this one, too, was, look, seven left on base for the Giants, 0 for fourth, runners in scoring position. They did have some opportunities, but the Dodgers, they kept them at bay, and they win by a final score of 3-1. to one. It kind of reminded me a lot of the NLDS last season where the Giants, they average just two runs per game, and that's why I think they couldn't. I think their orange and black magic is starting to run out. I think the orange and black magic is starting to run out for San Francisco, but let's jump back into the comments on all your takes on tonight's Dodgers. 3-1 win over the Giants in the first meeting of 19 this season. Here we go. We got Roberts almost blew this one. Do you agree or disagree with Roberts' decision to take out Julio Urias? Now, there's a couple ways to think about this. You could say Julio was rolling. He was efficient. He wasn't having very much stress in those innings, and maybe you trot him out there for the seventh, and you just get one more inning out of him. But there's another way to look at this, too, is Julio Urias. He ran out of gas last year in the NLCS. He went over 185 innings last year in the regular season. It was a new career high for him. So maybe they're thinking, hey, we want to preserve the Urias because we're thinking about October and we're not thinking about April and May. We're playing the long game in this one. So that's one thing to consider. And like I said, the Dodgers, 31 games in 31 days coming up. They're going to be playing a lot of baseball. And yes, you want a rested bullpen, but you also want a bullpen that has a rhythm to it and is going out there and getting consistent work. Because look at Craig Kimball. You saw him going from not getting consistent work to being used in consecutive days to tonight he had some command issues. We got Damian. What's up, DMAC? What up, Damian? We got needed that win against Rodon. It's from Justin Lamas. Yeah, uh, that's 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 a great point. Yeah, Rodon, he's been on fire to start the year. Got to give them credit. It was a nice pickup by Farhan and – I think the Dodgers going out there against a, against a, a hot pitcher in Carlos Rodon and, and finding a way to get it done, I think the, that's going to bode well for their confidence later in the season as well. So you got to give the Dodgers a lot of credit for this win tonight. They go out there. They win the first game of the season. They really send a message to this Giants team that, hey, we're not losing this division. You snap that eight-year division winning streak last season. You won 107 games. You made us chase you all year. We're not going to let that happen again. I think 
that's the focus for the Dodgers this year. They want to build a cushion. They want to go into the postseason healthy and rested, and they don't want to have to chase the Giants all season like they did last year. And I think also anytime for the Dodgers with this team's struggles against left-handed pitching to go out there and get a win against a lefty is definitely something that's going to continue to bode well for their confidence. Because the Dodgers, they've struggled against lefties. Heading into tonight's game, a 641 OPS against lefties this year. That's 28th in Major League Baseball. So to go out there against Rodon, that was big and working those counts. And when Rodon was Rodon, they were able to tack on an extra insurance run there late in the game in the eighth. And we're going to break it all down. But let's jump back in the comments section. Do you disagree or agree with Dave Roberts' decision to pull Julio? Who is your player of the game as well? Drop that down below in the comments section. Quack the Duck. What's good, DMAC? What's good, Quack the Duck? Iris K. Julio and CT3 players of the game. Adrian Gonzalez. I give all the credit to that bud hat and jersey. Hey, that's my man, Brooke, who's at the game. He's in the clubhouse right now asking questions, being a Big J journalist in his beat writer era. So shout out to my man, Mr. Brooke Smith. But yeah, that's clean, right? It looks got, uh, got a nice little NASCAR vibe to it. This Bud's for you. Uh, my man was the warlock. At, uh, I won't lie. I had some anxiety. Iris K. Yeah, did that, ha that game have a different feel? You felt that intensity. You felt that tension, that Dodgers Giants feeling is like no other. And you felt that tonight. And you know the Dodgers just hits different. You're seeing Freddie Freeman. You're seeing Hanser Alberto. You're seeing guys experience this rivalry for the first time. I don't know if you saw that too. Early in the game, Carlos Rodon, he throws a pitch that's the bottom of the zone. It clearly is outside of the zone and Cody Bellinger, he gives the ump a little look like, bro, that is not a strike. And Rodon, he's like, you got to swing. You got to swing at that belly and things like that. And I'm like, hey, Rodon, maybe he would be swinging if you were throwing strikes, which you weren't in that at bat. So here we go. Damien, um, I use that defend Roberts, but his, his use of the bullpen the past week and taking out Julio early, especially not knowing who's tomorrow's starter would be. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a little gamesmanship. That's a little gamesmanship by, by the Dodgers. But, yeah, I agree. I think that, look, Julio goes out there. He gives you another inning. And, uh, yeah, he's cruising. And he was so efficient in this game that – and the feel he had for his breaking stuff, the way he was a get, getting ahead in counts, the way he was attacking the strike zone, it was definitely something that you would be okay with if you're a Dodgers fan, especially in a close game. You go out there, and Julio Urias is a big game pitcher. Julio Urias loves moments like this. And, yes, his velo was a little down tonight, but it, for Julio, it's about throwing strikes. It's about inducing soft contact and – it's about getting that swing and miss when when it's there for him. But here we go. We got San Fr <laughs> Bob. That is a good one. Don't because I love it. The San Francisco Cryants. I love it because you know what, man. I'm feeling that. You know, nothing is anything. Any of these cool, man. San Francisco. I don't know if you guys saw. I was on the the, the Bleach Report show today, and this guy brought some Mickey Mouse ears. It was good times. It was good times, but man, those poor Giants fans, man, they're still hurt by losing the only postseason matchup to the Dodgers at their home turf. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Uh, love the stealing love the stealing this season. Yeah, that's definitely something that is a big takeaway early on this year is the Dodgers' aggression on the base pass. That's what you're seeing early on from this Dodgers offense. And look, we saw last year a lot of you guys out there saying, hey, we want to see small ball. We want to see a little more action on the base pass just as baseball fans. it's Look, it's just more exciting that way. And then when you have the athletes that the Dodgers have, you have Trey Turner, Trey the Burner Turner, Sonic Hedgehog in the flesh out there, the Flash. You know that you want to utilize that speed. You have Mookie Betts. He can steal bases. You have Cody Bellinger, Gavin Lux, Chris Taylor. There's a lot of athletes on this team. So yeah, do you want to take advantage of that advantage if you're the Dodgers? So I think that that's something that you're really seeing early on this season. The Dodgers going out there Stealing bases. They're in the league right now in swipe bags this season. I think you're going to see that trend. That was clearly a conscious decision in the offseason. Hey, we're going to be more aggressive on the base pass because we left some runs on the field last year. But we need Trinan back. Iris K. That's real, that's one that I'm a little concerned about because he hasn't begun. He hasn't begun to throw. He's up in Washington. He's on paternity leave. But when Dave Roberts starts to be a little cagey with information, I was in the dugout. Um, 
uh, last week or last Friday when they asked about Blake Trinan. And you can, when you see Dave Roberts kind of pause and kind of formulate what he's going to say when it comes to injured players and kind of spin it, that's when you kind of think, hey, maybe it's something a little more serious when it comes to Blake Trinan. But, yeah, I mean, he was a top 10 reliever last season, and the Dodgers definitely need their best high leverage hurler on the mound for this stretch run. So you don't want to rush him back. But he even said, like Blake Trinan told me, um, at spring training, he said, hey, I was not happy with the short and spring training. I wasn't happy with the lockout situation because of the ramp-up time. And for guys like him that, look, he has – some serious stuff when it comes to high velocity, when it comes to serious break on his slider. So to throw guys in there, um, yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely uh, something that you want to consider there. And uh, I think that Blake trying, we're going to have to keep a close eye on that one. But here we go, back to the comment section. We got Diane. I know it's a long season, but why don't they leave in the Uriase? Why don't they leave the Uriase in? Yeah, Diane, I think that's kind of a million-dollar question. Thankfully for Dave Roberts, that didn't bite him today. Julio improved it 2-1 and one on the year. Gave up zero runs, had a scoreless six innings tonight, four hits, ended up with four strikeouts, no walks. Like I said, he was getting ahead in the count. He was commanding that fastball, that slurve, that curve. And I think that, yeah, I'd be totally fine for him to go back out there and continue to pitch. It's just if you're this Dodgers team, you know they want to utilize this bullpen and they don't want to give the opposing team as many opportunities to see Julio, but the way he was cruising, I just thought that, yeah, you want to leave him out there, and he's such a gamer, and Julio Urias never wants to come out of games. He's such a competitor, a fiery competitor, especially against the hated Giants that I was a little surprised that they took him out, considering, I mean, he wasn't just kind of efficient. He was ultra efficient tonight, and if you look at his last outing, Julio, against the Diamondbacks, he threw 81 pitches in going six innings. Then before that, he throws 75 pitches in a start against San Diego where he went five innings. Then before that, 65 and 57. So yes, starters are still in the buildup stage to an extent, but at this point, we're well past what would normally be the end of a normal spring training. You got guys heading into their fifth and sixth starts at this point of the season. So hey, let's go. Let's let's pitch, man. Let's go out there and let's ball out. But here we go. Peak Peek a peep. Only two things I hated about this win. One, Roberts yanking Arias when he was set to go seven easy. And two, JT's throwing air costing the Dodgers a shutout. Yeah, so look, if you look at the metrics, yes, Justin Turner has lost a step. It's range, and tonight I think that you saw – yeah, I mean the the throwing throwing it wide there and caught because that actually that goes yeah throwing it wide there and throwing it into the dugout. I mean that's just a bad play by Justin Turner. He's gonna be the first person to tell you that. So yeah, definitely was not a good not a good play right there. And really, as a whole, this defense hasn't looked fantastic. But on the flip side, you had some defensive plays tonight that really helped preserve this win. How about Mookie Betts? I think it felt like such a long time ago, but Mookie Betts he made a big play early on the game that really changed the game because it allowed Julio Urias to go out there and not have to labor there in that first inning. And we saw what he was able to do in the game to go 60, go six innings, throw six innings of scoreless ball on just 65 pitches. And that first inning there was big because who uh, Slater, he reached on that infield single. And then Dubon, he lined out to right. And you saw Mookie Betts, he made that nice leaping play. He changed his route a little bit. And if he doesn't catch that ball, that's going into the gap. And you're having second and third with, one, with no outs there. And that totally changes the complexion of the game. Because after that, we saw... He makes the play for the first out, and then on the first pitch, he gets rough to ground into a double play. So that totally changed the game right there because if the Giants get on top early and give Rodon a cushion, give him a one- or two-run lead, that's going to put the Dodgers behind the eight ball early in the game. So I thought that was such a massive sequence there for Mookie Betts to make that highlight play. It almost reminded me a little bit of the play in the NLCS, that little jumping play he made. It was Air Mookie out there living his Betts life. Hey, by the way, all you guys, can we stop in the comments? We can we can finally stop telling Mookie to eat a, a meat milkshake or have a big steak or go to In-N-Out because we know he's eating meat. We can put that behind us. Mookie Betts is not a vegan. Not that it matters, but here we go. Blue Magic, dead balls are bullsh... Yeah, I mean, seriously, the dead balls, 
Rob Manfrod, I mean, let's just add this to the long list of things he's done to hurt the game of baseball. How does this help the game of baseball when you have these long warning track track flyouts? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to a baseball game to go, oh, hear, hear a loud crack of the bat. Oh, you know, I, who wants that, right? You want to see chicks dig the long ball. People like home runs, and I think – If I'm a player, I'm very frustrated at this point. A player like Max Muncy and Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger's average is dropping down to 200, but if you've been following the last couple weeks, he's had a lot of hard contact, a lot of balls that we've seen go past the fence in years past that have stayed in the yard this year. So very frustrating, but here we go. Let's go Dodgers from Junior Parga. We got uh, Diane. The dead ball sucks. We all love to see home runs. There we go. Iris K, I'm sick of warning track catches. I need some home runs. Thank you. We got uh, J.D. Vesia brought it again tonight. Love his energy on the mound. That's from J.D. Yeah, you really can't understate what what Vesia does when he's out there. He brings the emotion. He brings the passion. He he told he said that look he's fully embraced what it means to be a Dollar Dodger and what that means is he wants to go out there and compete and he understands the pressure that comes and the expectations that comes with wearing that Dodger blue and he came out there in that inning where you know Dave Roberts he was uh he was a little worried because you know the internet was going to be attacking him the first chance they could if the Giants managed to tie the game at any point or even take the lead. But Vesia came in and he took care of business. And my favorite thing about Vesia too was you saw him when he goes out there. He was frustrated that he gave up the sacrifice fly. You saw he was very frustrated that he gave up that sack fly, and that's what I love about Vesia. He's such a competitor, but. You saw, you know, he had Gonzalez there down in the count on a 1-2 count. And on the fourth pitch, throws that fastball. Missed a little bit of the location. It was uh, it kind of leaked a little in there, right, uh, in the inside corner. And uh, Gonzalez, pretty nice piece of hitting. He just hits that fly ball to left. That made it 2-1 Giants. But then he bounces back. And uh, then he bounces back right there to get Williams swinging with the elevated fastball. So I love the electricity on his heater, and he goes out there getting more and more experience, more and more confidence. And when he has that stuff, he's got that natural life on his fastball, that natural run. When he's commanding it, he's really, really a talented pitcher, and he's also working that changeup that you like to see. I thought Bruce Dark Gratterall, his stock, stock up, stock down. I would say his stock is going down just a little bit right now. He didn't look his best. In his uh, in his last uh, last appearance against the Tigers this weekend, then tonight he uh, he had the infield single. I mean, obviously, he was missing his spots a little bit with the command, but Justin Turner's error there definitely hurt because look, it was still ruled an infield single, but it was a throwing error by Justin Turner. He throws it wide of Freddie Freeman. And, look, if he makes that catch, it wasn't going to go as an error. But the fact that it went past and went into that dugout, that's why you got the error. And then he walks Brandon Crawford. So if you look at the at-bat to Crawford, I mean, he starts with two cutters. So he's really throwing that – I mean, that, he's throwing that cutter quite a bit. If you look at the sequence here, starts him off with a cutter – and uh, starts with a cutter away, and then a cutter bottom of the zone he misses. The fastball bottom of the zone he misses. Then another cutter bottom of the zone he misses. Then he fouls off one at the bottom of the zone. Then he kind of misses with the cutter in the heart of the plate, kind of got away with one there. And then he misses with the fastball, and the fastball hitting 98. So definitely not his best stuff tonight. And then he did get the ground ball to Estrada that allowed Crawford and Flores to advance. But I think Bruce Dark Gratterall is a guy that, look, he's got wicked stuff, and I think that we have to be a little patient with him at this point to see if he can make that cutter a money pitch. He's throwing it with the Kenley grip, so we'll see because we know he has the slider. We know he has the two-seam fastball, and we know that for the most part, he's the guy that does throw strikes and throws it in the zone, and that's why he's able to induce a lot of Soft contact, but guys, because guys will swing at his pitches inside the zone. But what was your take on Bruce Dar Gratterall? What's your trust level on Bruce Dar Gratterall? On a scale of one to ten, how much do you trust Bruce Dar Gratterall out there on the mound? Let me know down below in the comment section. Let's jump back into it. By the way, Blue Magic long season. 
Here we go. Where's Bumman Blue Magic? Long season. Give Doc a raise for managing the season, not just the game. I like that take. Iris K, I'm okay with pulling Hulu. It's a long season. Iris K. Uh, Strider, D-Mac, hard-fought game, and Kimbrell didn't have his best stuff, but glad he pulled through and got the save. Yeah, Strider, hear you. I think that doesn't get said enough. We always want guys to go out there and shove and guys to go out there and dominate. How about guys that go out there and, like you said, don't have their best stuff, but still manage to get the job done. And you saw that at bat, the first at bat to Flores, he just wasn't he just wasn't throwing strikes. He had issues commanding the zone. He was missing with that fastball, missing with that curveball, and nine pitches in that at bat. He was fouling off his fastball. And yeah, like I like Kimbrell said, if he's not throwing that curveball over for strikes and they're sitting on his fastball, that's when he tends to get into trouble. But then he bounced back and he got Crawford swing. I thought this was such a key at bat for Craig Kimbrell to get Crawford swinging and to get that first out of the inning because if he gets the, if, the, if he walks the leadoff man and the next guy up and the Giants down just three to one, they put the go ahead run at the plate and that place is going to be ten. So I think that was just a big big at bat there for Kimbrell to go out there and manage to get that uh, that strikeout. So I think that was uh, that was huge for him, especially in that stage of the game, because he knows that look, this is this is the Dodgers Giants rivalry. He saw Kenley Jansen get booed off the mound when he blew saves against the Giants last season. So I think to go out there and get it done, and uh, you look at that at bat. He, his first pitch, that curveball, really nice pitch. He he starts ahead 0-1 the count, and then he throws three straight balls. He misses high with the fastball. He misses low and inside with the curveball. He misses low and inside with the fastball. And then Crawford, he fouls it off. That loads the count. And then on the sixth pitch, he gets him swinging with that fastball, challenges him with that fastball away. So that was a big sequence. And then he gets Estrada to fly out for the second out. And that was another battle, another eight-pitch at bat. And that was another full count. So that was really the theme with Craig Kimbrell. The first three batters he faced in that inning all load the count full against him. And then Gonzalez reaches on that bunt single to catcher Flores. He advanced to second. So he had runners on first and second with two outs. And this has been one of the best teams at the plate in scoring position with two outs for the season. So that's when I got a little bit nervous because of how much success the Giants have had in these situations this season. But still, Campbell was able to go out there, execute pitches. And I really thought he started to really put it together in his at last at bat because you see he gets ahead in the count with that fastball. And then with that fielder's choice, that ends the game. And the Dodgers, they get the dub by a final score of 3-1. to one. But here we go. Let's find out what is your trust level. What is your trust level on Bruce? Ruzdar Gratterall, because we know he has all the talent in the world. We know he has all the talent in the world, but we also know that he's still a project. He's still a work in progress, and I think if you're Bruzdar Gratterall, <laughs> if, he, if he's able to um, throw that cutter for if, that, if he's able to make that cutter a true weapon for him, he's going to be a different pitcher completely because he's going to be able to generate a little more swing and miss, but if you look at his start before tonight against the Detroit Tigers where he allowed that hit. He had the walk and the strikeout. So look for the most. And then against Arizona at Arizona, gave up those two runs. But so far this season, for the most part, he's had a lot of success. But I just do think my confidence level with him, I'll give it about like a six and a half. I'll be honest with you, like a six and a half at the moment. But uh, but I think that could rise quickly. That could rise quickly because he's a guy that get really hot. But San Francisco, sad, sad Francisco. How about that one? Uh, Gat, Gnat, still petrified. I like that Mike Jones. Loved Joe and Oral talking about the Giants' check swings tonight. Dude, you know, Oral had me laughing when he was looking at Julio Urias on the broadcast, and he says, Julio is the Giants' daddy. He straight up said, he goes, Julio is the Giants' daddy. I was like, my man, my man, Oral Hershaz, you got that right. Uh, Craig Osterberg, Justin Turner should be the DH. Yeah, I mean, I think that that was always the plan, and I think early on this season he has played a little more third base and you have you would have expected, but on the same token, you know the Dodgers they want to rotate guys in and out of that DH position. They want to keep guys fresh. They want to give guys a breather. They want to give a different look from that DH spot. His OPS is a little higher as a DH versus playing third. And look, like I always say, father of time is undefeated. And we know that this could be his last year with the Dodgers. Has he lost a step? There's no question about it. But still, even though he's old in the tooth at 37, can still play competent third base. 
There's no question about that. But uh, I think that they're magnified because it kind of fits your narrative if he does have a bad play there to say, oh, he's too old, he's too this, he's too that. But he'll make adjustments, and uh, here we go. Uh, DMAC, what's your con- – his front, let's read some more comments. Adrian, last year Dave Roberts said something along the lines of, no one is surprised when they're taken out or rested, meaning there is a game plan and they are all flowing. Adrian Gonzalez, that's a fantastic point. This organization, they're in lockstep with each other. From the front office to Andrew Friedman to Brandon Gomes to all the powers that be within this Dodgers organization, the scouting department, the pitching coaches, the analytics department. Everyone is on the same page with each other. And look, there's a lot of things that we're not privy to as far as what's Julio Urias going through. But I think that the fact that he was cruising tonight, I think that we would all have been more than happy to see him go out there for the seventh inning. But this is a long season. We did see him run out of gas in the 2021 postseason. And I'm completely fine with the Dodgers, who have been leaning on their bullpen a lot early on this season, to go out there and uh, and uh, utilize this bullpen that's been one of the best bullpens in all of Major League Baseball. So here we go. Because, look, how can you fault someone for going to one of the best ba- bullpens in the league? So that's another thing. But Urias is the man from Antonio, Dylan Hare, Vesey, and Hudson. Solid tonight. Hudson came back and got out of a little jam. Hope Gratterall can find his best stuff again soon. Yeah, we haven't really talked very much about Daniel Hudson. But, yeah, I think that he did a fine job coming in there. It was funny to see him. By the way, one word response. What was it like to see Jock? Because we saw Jock Peterson with the Braves. We saw him in the Pearls. But to see Jock Peterson in that Giants jersey, that Giants uniform, what was it like to see Jock Peterson strike out against the Dodgers in a Giants uniform? Give me your one-word answer of how that felt like to see. Let me know down below. But uh, yeah, I think Hudson came in. He strikes out Jock with that changeup away. He gets him to chase. Then he walks Slater. And uh, on that pitch, yeah, did have some mistakes. He definitely had some mistakes in that at-bat that uh, he probably would like to have back. He left uh, some stuff over the plate, but he does come back and he strikes out Valsier, so I think that was that was big, and then you saw him get rough to ground a third. So, yeah, a lot of things, that's a really good point. Kind of the theme tonight was guys going out there and not having their best stuff, but still getting the job done. Daniel Hudson, we saw that from him in the eighth inning. We saw that from Bruce Dark Gratterall at times. Even Alex Vesia, the first batter he faced, giving up the sack fly to Gonzalez, missing his spot a little bit inside. Then we also saw that with Kimbrell at the end of the game. Pretty much everyone out of that bullpen wasn't at their very best, but was still able to put up some solid work there. And then, of course, a gem by the Uriase. He goes six scoreless, four punch outs, no run. So, look, I mean, I think the big question for me is who has the better one-two punch in the front of their rotation. Is it the Giants with Logan Webb and Carlos Rodon? Is it Logan Webb, the guy that was pretty much unhittable at times last year? He has that that sinker that's just one of the best pitches in the league when it's on. And then Carlos Rodon, I think the big question about him is how good will he be for the duration of the season? Because he got off to a great start last year. We saw him flirting with a perfect game. We saw him with the no-hitter. And what happened towards the end of the season, they were – pitch him on six days rest. He got his velocity back a little bit at the end. It definitely kind of stabilized towards the end there, but he's a guy that you always wonder about when it comes to pitching the entire season and being able to maintain that level of effectiveness. But uh, let me ask you that question, because after seeing Julio Urias pitch tonight and dominate the Giants, a team that is one of the better offensive teams in the league, I think for them to go out there and do- for Julio to go out there and dominate this Giants team, we saw Walker Buehler pitch the first and only complete game of the season last week against the Diamondbacks. I think I'm going with Buehler and Urias over Logan Webb and Rodon for the entire season. But I want your takes on that one as well. But bring back steroids and juice balls. That's from Mike Jokes, who <laughs> he got me rolling. Man, hey, man, whatever. <laughs> it's their life, right? Um, look, people love home runs. Let's just put it that way. We also like strikeouts, too. It's not like, not like uh, the tension of a moment when the opposition has a chance to score runs against your team and you see that punch out. I think I'd rather take that. But uh, uh, stress you, I like that. 
Uh, I always say Domesio with Vesio, but I like that. Guys, we're like a – there's like a think tank of nicknames. You guys know how I get down. You guys know I live for this stuff. But uh, Moose 1032, the dead ball is going to make baseball very low scoring, which isn't exciting for young and casual fans of baseball. A fantastic point, Moose 1032, is look, we're trying to grow the game. Look, it's the NBA playoffs. You have John ja Moran going up against Steph Curry in the dubs, the Grizz, the dubs. You have Jason Tatum in the Miami Heat. You have Embiid and Harden – well, Embiid is going to play later in the series. But the point is, the NBA is in the peak of its season, the postseason. And you got NBA, you got a baseball with the warning track power, the big hits off the bat. It's like, but in a deep fly ball to right field. And it is caught at the warning track. Buzz killed. You don't want to see that. So, yeah, that's a great point. It's not just the excitement of the game for, you know, older fans, middle-aged fans, whatever it is. We know that baseball tends to skew older than most professional leagues, but you're, you're all. it's all about the next generation at this point. You want to grow the game, and that's a really good point. I think that that's a, it's a strange thing for Major League Baseball to do because, I mean, there's on one token, you want more action. You want the ball in play as much as possible. And, yes, if you're having a home run derby, you're going to have longer games, but you take away the sticky stuff and then you deaden the ball. It's like, dude, why don't we just play in, like, 1912 and have black and white TVs and things like that? Because, I mean, come on now. San Francisco sucks. I'm just going to read that. This is from HP627. Isaac, hey, Doug, I think this is an easy answer, but who's worse, McCourt or Manfred? Hey, thanks, Isaac. That will give me a chance to plug a new video on the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Dodgers Nation. TV, where it is Frank Rupp, the demise of the Dodgers under Frank McCourt. So, yeah, go check out that video. Give me all your takes on Frank McCourt. And I would say that that's a tough question because Manfred, Manfraud, he called the World Series trophy a piece of metal. He didn't punish the Astros adequately. He didn't even give them a slap on the wrist. They didn't punish them really whatsoever. He gave their owner, Jim Crane, a $4 million fine, which, you know, something like that, which is basically a parking ticket for a guy that has that kind of money. And then also you've seen the game kind of uh, – what up, DMAC? What up, Joseph Megazeni? One of our loyal loyal, loyal uh, Dodgers Nation post-game show day ones. Always always repping, man, my, my man. Um, but, yeah, I think when it comes to who is worse, I think I still have to go with – I think I have to go with Frank McCourt. I really do because for me personally, in 2008 – the Dodgers were a couple arms away, and they had a chance to get CeCe Zabath. They had a chance to get Cliff Lee in those years, and I think that the fact that he ran this franchise into the ground, I mean, it seems okay now because of what Guggenheim has been able to do, but let's say Guggenheim didn't work out and this Dodgers franchise is still reeling. I think it was very dangerous what McCord did to this Dodgers franchise. So I'm actually going to say McCourt because of just all the terrible things he did with this franchise, the the low attendance dropping to 20, dropping 22%. I mean, it was some dark times, but it's kind of like it's kind of like uh they're both terrible. They're both terrible. But here we go. Gratterall trust level 3, Bazooka trust factor 6.9. Isaac I trust Bruzdar 1 out of 10, got to be a 6 and a half out of 10. Dirk Nowitzki 6, he needs to be used in low leverage situations for now. Bruzdar Gratterall uh, five from Diane Schroeder. Frank Urias, Urias was 65-52 today. He should complete this dude. Yeah, I mean, I was saying that too. Man. I was beating that drum as well. You guys know my favorite pitcher on the team. And uh, I love to go and watch him deal. And he definitely was doing that tonight. He was so efficient. The command was on point. He was getting ahead in the count. And like I said, that first inning was key. The defensive play by Mookie Betts to go out there and save that from being a double from Dubon and saving it from being second and third with uh, no outs. And then he's able to get the out on the catch and able to get rough to ground into that double play. So there's a lot of butterfly effect with this game of baseball. And I think that you saw during this game with kind of the throwing error by Justin Turner, there's certain plays there where it did feel like we had the orange and black magic in play tonight. But the Dodgers, they prevailed. They get the win, and they beat the Giants in their first meeting of the season by a final score of 3-1. to one. The Dodgers are in first place in the NOS at 15-7, and seven, a game and a half ahead of the Giants and and also ahead of the Padres. I would, do you guys think the Padres are a threat? I mean, come on now. The Padres, hey, if they can keep afloat until Fernando Tatis Jr. can return, you have to say that uh, 
I mean, look, the Padres could be dangerous, let's be honest. I mean, that rotation could be better this year, especially getting guys back. We're going to see Clevenger, and uh, we saw how good you Darvis looked against the Dodgers. So, I mean, should we stop sleeping on the Padres? Are they a real contender? I mean, I think we're going to have to talk about that at some point pretty soon. I'm not really there yet, but we saw the Padres. Uh, they're a decent club. They're a decent club. I mean, Manny Machado is really having a nice year. I mean, leads – Everyone in F war so far to start this season. But let's jump back into this comment section here, guys. Who do you guys think actually – yeah, well, let's jump back to this comment section. I always have a lot of questions to ask you guys. But here we go. We got uh, a trust level right now. This is from Felix, a 6.5 out of 10. Salute. Rod bless you. So happy Jock didn't get a hit. That's from Iris K. You didn't want to see him have some success. Jock Peterson on the Giants. How? Ryan, a 7 out of 10. That's your confidence level for Bruce Dark Gratterall. Big Dove from San Gribble. Victor R. Wendez, Andrew, come back. We got uh, King Yellowman with the wave. You guys like the wave? Are you guys, do you guys love or hate the wave? Because I think that, look, I mean, I'll, I'll give my thoughts on the wave in a second. But what's up with Dylan Batanzas? Yeah, I think when it comes to Dylan Batanzas, he's a guy that uh, I think <laughs> that's, that's really interesting that uh, that you bring that up because I was talking to someone today about him and look I mean when he was at his best I mean he was literally one of the best and the best uh, relievers in all of Major League Baseball and he's on that minor league deal and we're gonna we're gonna see him look I mean there's uh there's no time no no timeline but uh, I think he's a guy that could get an opportunity this year and I think that by what you're hearing that the re, you know his he is getting healthy. And uh, he's a guy that can definitely, potentially, if he's on, I mean, the fastball velocity was really down, and that's kind of one thing that uh, that made him so successful. But uh, I don't know. I mean, the Dodgers they did protect themselves when it, from a depth standpoint. So um, they, they, they're they going to hit on, on one of these guys, that uh, one of these reclamation projects that, uh, that we've seen them hit on for so many years. But uh, here we go. Let's jump back into the comments. I'm about there. I, got, I lost you guys for a second. Here we go. Uh, start juicing the ball again. Uh, I'm done watching. I think one of the issues, too, is the fact that you have Major League Baseball. They own the company that makes the baseballs in Rawlings. You're seeing less drag on the ball this season. So guys are really forced to put a lot of top spin on it, to kind of a lot of backspin on it to kind of get the balls out. And to me, I mean, one question I kind of want to ask Doc the next time I see him is, are you going to eventually change your approach at the plate if this holds up and you're seeing so many balls die at the track? I mean, I think you want guys to go out there and give you quality at bats and just kind of hit the ball hard. But look, I mean, this we've taught launch angle for so many years and guys are trying to hit home runs that uh, at some point you got to tweak your approach if the ball isn't allowing you to see the same results because uh, it's just dying. But here we go. Hudson is good. We got uh, when will Muncy start hitting? Is AAA, is a AAA stint out of the question from Jay Collector? Well, I mean, look, if you look at Max Muncy, he has definitely been going through it. There's uh, Make no mistake about that. Max Muncy has definitely had his struggles at the plate this season. He's two for his last 27 with an 83 average. He's almost feels like this year's Bellinger so far. Really, almost feels like this year's Cody Bellinger so far in the season. And, uh, yeah, you hate to see it, but he's just not getting behind balls. And, yes, he's still able to draw the occasional walk, but, look, we don't need a guy to go up there and uh, and walk. We need him to be the Dodgers' best thumper and give him that thunder from the left side of the plate. Last season, he leads the Dodgers in home runs with 36. Since he joined the club in 2018, he's hit more home runs than any Dodger. So they need, to go, they need him to go out there and find a way – to kind of break through this. But I do think we have to have some patience. When you consider what happened to that UCL, when you consider how serious that injury could have been and the fact that he did avoid surgery, that I'm still going to give him a little more time to try to figure things out at the plate. There are some encouraging batted ball numbers when it comes to Max Muncy. So we look at that barrel percentage and things like that. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, he is struggling at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I think when it comes to Max Muncy – that you don't want to have him, you know, you don't want to like destroy that confidence. But uh, he and he's look, he's a guy that's look very frustrated. You can just see. I don't know if you guys remember last week with some of the calls against Detroit. You saw him; he was visibly upset. He was visibly out there. Just uh, he just wasn't uh, wasn't. But look at him; he's in the 99 percentile in walk percentage. He's not chasing pitches, so the play discipline is still there. 
but you are seeing hard hit percentage go down. You're seeing him not have as much success at the plate. And really one of the big keys, too, is against fastballs. This year, he's hitting 130 against fastballs. Last season, he hit 307 against heaters. Had an expected slug on fastballs of 687 in 2021. This year, that number's down to 478. So expected slug, of course, that's based on a lot of your batted ball profile. So uh, here we go, guys. Back into the comments section. I noticed the uh, the comments are a little off here, but uh, bum, bum, bum. there we go. Let me fix that. Uh, but yep, guys. Any other takeaways on tonight's game? What are your thoughts on the Dodgers getting the dub tonight? I think we might do a show tomorrow because I was I was out for a couple of days, uh, so we might bring back some. We might do a show tomorrow since it's such a big game and got a big weekend series too coming up. So we'll kind of talk about that. We'll jump to the comments one more time. Actually, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about earlier in this game too. Let's talk about earlier in this game. Um, Dodgers able to get those runs there in the bottom of the second. So a one out walk for Max Muncy. So you have to give him credit for getting that rally started. He held up his swing there, and then Bellinger he draws a walk. We talked about Rodon trying to get him to chase that slider away. And then on a 1-2 count to Chris Taylor, Rodon, he lets one get away that slips out of his hand. And Chris, then the runners advance. And then Chris Taylor, great two-strike hitting right on that fastball in the outside corner. He goes with it to right field, and he's able to get the two-run single right there. The Dodgers scored two runs on two walks and the Taylor single. So Great approach there from Chris Taylor. Nice to see him continue to have success. He is clutch Taylor, so that was definitely big. Uh, but here we go, back in the comment section. We got definitely Bueller Urias is better than Rodon and L Logan Webb. But uh, Blue Magic, Pun Factory 101, starring D-Mac. And, hey, you know what I did. But you guys are you guys are great out there, man. You guys are fire, man. <laughs> Honestly, weather affects the, impacts the ball. It's a great point, Jorge. We saw that. We see that early on in the season with that marine layer in Los Angeles. You're going to see it heat up. And I think you're going to see the bat start to heat up as well. And as a result, and I do think, I would suspect, because we're, we're verging on historic lows uh, we're already at historic lows when it comes to batting average and, and slugging percentage around the league. And I know if this holds up, the league will act because we saw last season the league acted when strikeouts were up because of the sticky stuff. And the league said, hey, well, we're just going to midseason. All of a sudden, we're not going to give you anything to grip the ball. We're going to say, hey, you can just use rosin. You can't even use sunscreen anymore. So I would not be surprised if the league made some type of dramatic change to the balls midseason or at some point in the near future if this holds up. But here we go. Uh, we got Diane. I feel like the pitchers are throwing rocks out there instead of balls. Yeah, I mean it's like they're hitting rolled up uh, rolled up socks. But my wife won't stop DMing DMac from Nando 390. Hey 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 there man, relax. <laughs> Anthony Keen, uh, that's the difference. <laughs> or hey Anthony Keen, it's like when an employer puts the AC on in the office to keep people awake. Man fraud sucks. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah, man, it's like cooking fish in the microwave in the office, and it's just that smell won't go away. <laughs> I love it. Uh, my man, Anthony Keen. Anthony Keen, I know it's off topic, but I just want your pick. Who's going to win the NBA championship? Um, Ryan, exactly what I said. The dead ball era is going to keep younger fans from becoming interesting. Frank, that's it. So weak. LOL, good analogy. <laughs> uh, but the Dodgers won a World Series. Hello, DMAC. What's up, Jenny Vega out there? A loyal Dodgers Nation post game show. Uh, fan out there, but Manfred hates the Dodgers. Manfred hates the Dodgers. Manfred pretty much hates baseball. He, I, I really don't think that Manfred loves the sport of baseball. I, I truly don't believe that. There's no other explanation as to why a guy can make so many bad decisions when it comes to this game. We know he's a robot, and the thing is, look, if you fire Manfred, the owners will select another puppet that they can get to manipulate. So, I mean, if you replace Manfred, you're just going to get another Manfred-like person that will execute their ideas. But McCourt was a saver. Um, BC knocked San Fran out of the playoffs, baseball and football. We got Frank save money. McCourt equals dark times from Debra Young. Yeah, oh, definitely. Dark, dark times. Cliff Lee had like one more good year in him. Yeah, Jorge. Hey, you're uh, preaching to the choir here. 
Uh, Diane, the frame of core video is a mass. Oh, hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate that, Diane. I really do. Look, I'm just super obsessed with that era because, you know, that's, you know, kind of, uh, you know, apart growing up and to watching the Dodgers so obsessed with uh, those teams out there that, uh, you know, just went, I might do uh, another one. Um, Joseph uh, Megazini, plus McCourt is still screwing us in parking. Yeah, totally. And he's also burying another professional sports team, Marseille of League On in the French League. So, yeah. They're, they're hating McCourt at this point. They should ban that guy from being anywhere near an ownership group in sports. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at the same token, we got a D-minus dog that McCourt. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot. Uh, Joe plus McCourt. I appreciate Eric. Uh, yes, that – hey, man, you guys are really cool, man. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, we're going to do – I'm going to try to start dropping – yeah, maybe you guys give me some ideas on other little, like, mini documentary st uh, style ones we can do because, yeah, I think I want to do one on Andrew Tolls. Uh, one on Yasiel Puig. I mean, maybe one on Trevor Bauer at some point. So, yeah, man, I mean, I like taking those deep dives, man. Definitely, definitely. Uh, but, yeah, thanks for rocking with us, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, stop it. It's early. Padres are a joke. That's from 21. Eric, Mr. Cat, one. Now when the Padres start playing good, teams, they'll go back down to where Earth. Give it uh, – thanks, Jenny. <laughs> Let me back. Uh, we'll be good. Let's trust the Dodgers, Jorge. Free Bobby Miller. Interesting. Free Bobby Miller. Yeah, I'm trying to get him, him on the channel, but uh, – He'll have his time. Trust me. They have a plan for Bobby Miller. They know how electric his stuff is. He's not quite ready. Of course, if they were in a bind, I could see him coming up here and having success. But it's going to benefit him, the starts he's getting right now in Tulsa. But McCourt owned the parking lot. Like the Wave, I'll do it. Wave's always been there. El Nino, SD Star. We got Wave is a Dodger Stadium stable. That's from Pika P. Okay. Yeah, the way I look at it, too, is look, if you hate the Wave, it's like you just hate fun. Because people go out there. And look, the thing about the Wave, too, is... If you're – some people, like, they want to go out to the game and they don't want to be zeroing on every pitch. They just want to have a good time, man. If you want to do the wave, do the wave, man. As long as you're going to the games and supporting the games, I totally get it. Now, when it comes to – when uh, when it comes to when we're uh, – during certain parts of the game, high tense games when the Dodgers are trying to get key outs, I think that's another question. But uh, the wave should be done sparingly. That's from Joseph Megazzini. I like the wave when I was about five for the Yankees. Even – honestly, even if I don't do the wave – you know, just kind of look at it when it's kind of going by me, you know, or just kind of give a lazy, like, sitting down wave. Whatever, dude. You know, like, uh, I'm going to start blo blogging, guys. I'm going to start blogging, guys. Cool, Jorge, do it. Moose, DMAG, hey, when fans are doing the wave and we're losing, it drives me crazy. Moose 1032, that is it's two ways to look at that, is you're so sad that they're losing, that they're doing the waves to pick themselves back up, literally, or you can look at it as like, hey, man, let's get focused. Let's get on the ball. I totally understand. But I think when you look at Dodger Stadium, the product of Dodger Stadium, if you go out there, you see my man DJ Severe. He's got that that party rocking. He's got the ravine rocking. Some people are there to party. Some people are there to do the wave. Some people are there to drink. And uh, some people are there to, you know, be the guy who has the headphones on. I'm headphones guy that listens to the game while watching at the game. I'm that that old soul out there. So there's just different uh, levels to your fandom. But uh, here we go. Steroids era baseball was cool. Jorge, thoughts on Tommy Canely, Silver Fox. Hey, if you saw me, I, I've i been saying for a long time now that Tommy Canely was going to be worth the wait. That dirty, filthy changeup that he possesses is going to be a weapon that's going to help the Dodgers all season long. And on top of that, when you consider Blake Trinan's current injury, if that's any – where near being as serious as some people fear, which hopefully it's not, having a guy like Tommy Canley that's pitched for the pinstripes, a big market like the New York Yankees that knows how to go out there and get it done in high leverage situations, that's going to be exactly what the Dodgers are going to need. But I'm definitely very high on Tommy Canley. I love his character, very popular in the clubhouse. Dirty changeup, dirty, dirty changeup, and I'm just excited to watch him make guys look foolish all season long. But here we go. Base, why the McCourt? Hey, sorry, man. Uh, and that's how uh, – is Max Muncy still injured? Jason, I do think that you would have to believe that he's somewhat feeling the effects of that UCL injury because this version of Max Muncy – He's getting overmatched on some fastballs. He's just not getting on top of heaters like we've seen him. Because sometimes with Max Muncy, when he's rolling, yes, he'll take his walks. And, yes, he won't expand the strike zone. But when he sees a pitch that he can drive, he takes off on it. He gets behind it. And it's usually three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows deep in the pavilion. But we just haven't seen him be able to see those results. But like I said, it's still 
somewhat early. Like Joe Davis said during the broadcast, in 21, 22 games, your numbers can change with one hot streak. But let's just hope he doesn't dig himself into too big of a hole like we saw with Cody Bellinger last season. But this year's <laughs> Joe just made this. Here's Cody. I'm not saying that he is yet. I'm saying that it's starting to feel like that when you make the connections to Cody Bellinger coming back off that shoulder injury and then Max Muncy coming back off that UCL injury and we try to brush it off and we heard a lot of positive things from Max Muncy himself saying he feels good but it doesn't look completely synced up at the plate and like that's the thing that's something that uh, we're kind of going to kind of have to monitor and discuss and I do think he's played tons of games too I think Dave would be wise to give him a few days off and I just kind of go to the cage and work some things out and make some adjustments but uh Deborah Young, I wonder, by the way, speaking of adjustments, watch my man Eric Ulo's video on Justin Turner's adjustments. My man Eric Ulo, you know him, right? The host of the 3 Up 3 Down podcast. He kills it on the YouTube channel on his uh, breakdowns. He's got a really good one on Justin Turner's adjustments that he's made at the plate, kind of opening up his stance a little bit, allowing him to get the fastballs up in the zone, and that's uh, a way that they've been attacking JC, JT early on this year. But I think Max's arm still hurts, and he isn't saying it. Iris K, and that kind of that tracks, right? That kind of fits. That's something you would expect from Max Muncy. He's a tough guy. You would expect him to just want to be out there. So it wouldn't surprise me in the least bit, but that's something I'm definitely going to try to work to kind of get to the bottom of. But uh, the guy, Damian, the guys struggling are pulling – too many outside pitches leading to routine ground outs and seems successful when going the opposite field. Yeah, we've seen lazy flyouts this season. We've seen soft contact, lazy ground outs. We've seen guys, like you said, trying to pull pitches this season. I think that, uh, look, I mean, you saw Gavin Lux pointing in that dugout when he went the opposite way with a hit the other day. Look, you got, I mean, sometimes you saw Miguel Cabrera, you saw Freddie Freeman. I mean, your approach at the plate is big when it comes to your success. Now, not every guy wants that. Some guys. They still they don't want to have an opposite field approach, and not every guy is built for that. But I definitely think that uh, we are seeing some some bad tendencies at the plate with some hitters early on this season. But like I said, I mean, it has to be pretty encouraging when you consider the fact that the Dodgers are 15 and seven, and to me, their offense isn't even close to clicking, isn't even close to firing on all cylinders. Because when they're right, and guys are gonna slump during the season, you can't expect guys to just be all hot up and down the order all season long. This is Major League Baseball. This is a sport where if you have success three out of 10 times, you're gonna be in the Hall of Fame potentially. So we have to remember that. So I think it's just about minimizing those cold starts streaks as much as possible up and down the lineup. But Dodgers will be tops in the West from Jorge. I believe the Dodgers will win tomorrow. By the way, let's wrap this up with what are your predictions for tomorrow? Who are you guys, what is your predictions Will the Dodgers win the first? By the way, I love how it's like a two-game series. Two-game series for the Dodgers. Uh, but what do you guys got? What do you guys got for in tomorrow's game? And then we will head out. Kevin Pilar hustle. <laughs> Doesn't Kevin Pilar look like a, a UFC fighter too? To me, that is what... Uh, uh, he looks like. But here we go. Let's uh, get back to these comments. Unfortunately, we got uh, 12 short weeks until Dustin May from Deborah Young. Dodgers 30 to nothing. I like that prediction. We got uh, Damian. Anyone see Mookie pull a Machado tonight on his ground out, jogging down the line, ball thrown in the dirt, and bobbled to first learn from it? Interesting. Um, by the way, it's going to be very interesting to see Alex Wood. By the way, have they announced the starter yet? Um, 4-2 Dodgers for tomorrow. Def sweeping the Giants. That would be great. Broom, Hilda. We got Kevin Pilar, Mookie, and Belly from Jorge. A lot of Kevin Pilar love. Win tomorrow, no doubt. Dodgers win tomorrow 6-2. to two. But, yeah, thanks for rocking with this, guys. Kind of went a little long on this one, but it was the Giants, and it was the first of 19 meetings. The Dodgers, they get it done against the Giants. A tight one. L.A., San Francisco, a little bit of a nail brighter, a little tension at the end with Craig Kimbrell allowing those two base runners. But the big talk tonight, Julio Urias getting pulled after throwing six scoreless innings and just such an incre uh, an efficient outing. A little average a little over 10 pitches per inning tonight. So Julio, he's really trending in the right direction. I love the way he looked tonight. Mookie Betts, you're starting to see more success from him. Chris Taylor really got that offense going. But a couple more comments, and we will head out of this one. Suns winning the ship this year. DMAC, Anthony Keene. Okay, I like that pick. I agree it's the Sun. How does anybody hate baseball? That's where I'd be stroking. Go Kings, go. Yeah, I, by the way, I'm like a very lightweight uh, – a very lightweight uh, Kings fan. Thanks, Moose. Appreciate you, my man. Very lightweight. Uh, yes, on the tolls, dog. Yeah, yeah. D-Mac, my hero. BC, right back at you. 
My man. Um, definitely um, lightweight on the Kings. I'm going to jump on that bag bandwagon fully. So if you see me rocking Kings gear, a Kings hat, a Kings jersey, don't make fun of me and call me a bandwagon fan. I'm just trying to support L.A., okay? Uh, but thanks, man. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for rocking with us, guys. Dodgers get the dub. See you guys possibly tomorrow. I'll let you guys know on Twitter, but I think we're going to do a, a postgame show tomorrow as well. But thanks for rocking with us. You guys are the best fans in the game. You love your boys in blue like no other. And look. The best thing possible, Dodgers beat the Giants, and the Dodgers are undefeated against San Francisco this year. But my name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. If you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. Enjoy the rest of your night. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. It's time for